Hi everyone, my name is Javier and Draw, and this is the second part of costume design. If you haven't seen the first part, it's going to be linked below. If you have seen it, follow me. Well, don't follow me yet to the screen. First, I want to tell you something. Since uh, about costume design is about context, I had to kind of develop the world and the characters that I'm going to put the costumes on. So I want to make this as quick as possible. So here it goes. I'm using an idea that I had for a comic book that I will eventually make someday if I can. And this is a world where it's like, I don't know, like 400 years in the future. And in the year 2016, like this year, because 2016 can still get worse, there is an event where magical creatures and every magical spell and everything magical on every book ever written about magic, every fictional book, everything a kid imagined, it all comes down to the world in just one big seismic event. It's clearly like it destroys society or whatever, but I'm talking about a future where it's a f magic exists and it's like kind of used regularly and it also you know well if i had to sum it up it would be like a post post apocalyptic future where magic exists i know that i'm mixing a lot of stuff like post apocalypse magic and future and that's a big challenge well but if you am going to create a look for characters i'm going to do it in a world that i've already thought of and that i want to uh, you know work on so i'm going to do that now about the characters, I'm thinking about uh, doing costumes for two different characters. Now these don't belong to my story, so I'm just creating them for this. But they're going to be a father and a daughter. The father is going to be like late 30s and the daughter is going to be like around 9 or 10 years old. Now these characters had to go from one point of the continent to the other because he, the father has to keep the girl safe and take their, her somewhere safe. So they have to go on a journey. Now the father is an engineer. He doesn't believe in using magic a lot. He knows that you know magic can be useful, but he's more like relying on his tools. And he's not like the burly guy. He's not really prepared for the journey that's ahead of them. So I wanted to make like this really uh, skinny, like kind of hunched guy. And the daughter is like this more. She actually loves magic and uh, she just like is full of imagination like this is, she was born in this magical world so she loves everything she sees about it and she wants to use it more so she's like always paying attention and his eyes are her eyes are really like wide and the relationship they have between the two is that well actually the father he wants to protect her a lot so that's going to go into the shape of the character now since I had to do some uh, research for the influences, and when I'm talking about influences, I'm talking about, you know, look at this. Now, now, now you can go to the screen. I'm talking about future, I'm talking about magic, and I'm talking about like post-apocalypse, and I'm thinking about traveling. So I have all these things, like first of all, well, the, fire, the father is, is a mechanical and engineer, he thinks logically, so they have this science costume, this engineer costume, but it's like apocalypse, apocalyptic and they're traveling so I have like this Mad Max jacket this look with this scarf I like this but it is also the future because even though it is like a society has crumbled and everything there's no reason why fashion design they haven't evolved in the same way that they would have if you're talking about some like Star Trek future or Star Wars future so I wanted to work on that too so these like angular lines I wanted to work them into the costumes as well and I also like you know all the magical aspect where they have all these elvish patterns and things like here in this uh, here follow me in this uh, armor and these patterns like this I want to work them into uh, the costume as well and there's a lot of things that I want to balance and not all of them are going to be like super prominent but still and for the girl I wanted to you know since she's going to be always protected by the father I want her to have this sort of cloak or cape or something like this and since we're talking about magic and she's a really magical girl I was thinking about more like elvish shoes or maybe using this pattern here that was like the research that I liked from everything I watched so uh, let's now move on to the next step that is going to be the silhouettes now this is going to be the silhouette for the father. Now I have to be honest with you, the ones that I have, that have the red asterisk are the ones that I chose to elaborate on. They are not actually my favorite ones, but 
the thing about the other uh, shapes that I have is that, well, let's imagine that you're creating this character for a story. In the story, there's are going to encounter a lot of people that are going to be dressed differently. And if you look at all the other shapes, they kind of look like someone would regularly uh, be dressed like. Uh, like this other silhouette could belong to any other character, not the special one, you know, like the main character. So giving them this like bug-like cloak or maybe this cape gives them a lot of prominence in a, in a way that you can identify the silhouette in any scene. These other characters, it could be anything. Like if I take the black away from this, this was what I was working on just a bit. And I really like this one. But still, it's like something that when you see the silhouette or something like that, or is this a character that they met during their travels, this could be like anyone. And it happens the same with the other ones. And here is the silhouette of the girl. Now, of course, I went with the theme of being protective of the girl. So I wanted to have like this cocoon or this bell shape. Uh, cape or cloak around the girl, this just looks like an old lady, I don't like it so much. And I wanted to repeat that theme on the hair, like it has to look like some sort of helmet, like she always has to be protected. That's what I wanted to go with. And the ones I like, like I like this one, he has like some bug-like uh, type of cocoon kind of thing. But I really like this too, because well, I just like how they look. And uh, if we take the black away, the, the shapes that I was working on, I uh, actually, well, I like this one that it looks like she's wrapped like some sort of, like you wrap a baby, like a newborn baby, talking about a lot how protective her father is going to be. But I really like this too, a lot how they look in the silhouette. Uh, you could re easily recognize the characters in this too. So what I did next is like, well, these two characters are going to be together all the time and that's also something that I can just omit. So I put them together here and try to see which combination worked the best. And the one that I like the best is actually this one. So I kept that one and I reproduced it again. And I tried to work like in the grease post that was linked on the first video. They talk about trying to work shapes between shapes, and that is by creating rhythm. So themes that are going to be repeating throughout the outfits of the characters. So here I have four that I started working on. And here on this one, this one was kind of like the easiest one. Because I was thinking about starting with the girl and how overprotective her father was going to be. So I started wrapping her up like in this type of cocoon kind of thing. And then I said like, well, her father is going to be doing the same to protect himself during the travel. So the, the cape that he has kind of has the same patterns of being like a lot of fabric covering him. Like I could go a little bit further and just uh, start doing just more like something like this. But I didn't want it to look too like a lot of rags thrown yeah, onto a person, like stick too much Mad Max because it would, uh, you know, ignore all the fact that I still want to uh, address the fact that fashion still evolved during these 400 years. So, and, uh, and the other ones I started working on, I was like, well, here I also work with this uh, elf pattern that I have with the girl, so it means that it's really angular, so that means that the cape and the pants are going to be super angular here, This he's going to have uh, some sort of jewel or something that clipped the cape that is kind of it kind of be like a bit futuristic in the shape i had to work you know i had to elaborate on that and then for the other ones well i was just playing around but i wanted to put some kind of like elvish patterns around the capes and the cloaks and work with those and make them like kind of work with the, ang the angles i also like a lot like in this one I I did it because I wanted to show a bit more, just like in this one or in this one, I wanted to show a bit more of the chest of the father, you know, to work some part of another garment there. And I also want to have it like those elvish patterns, like maybe the guy is an engineer and maybe he doesn't want to use a lot of magic, but he's not stupid, so he's going to use magic to protect his daughter. That's why I want to put like some kind of magical 
a thing on her like in this one it has the elvish patterns and maybe a jewel or something that pendant that would protect her and at the same time you know he's going to try to protect himself so is he going to try to be practical in the way he's going to dress to travel but at the same time it's like his last line of defense it might be a best that has some kind of magical protection and whatnot so now what i have to do is i have to start working colors on this that is going to be well I'm I'm really bad at creating color palettes and I really haven't decided what the palette is going to be for this because if I go too green it's going to be too elvish for this and I don't want to go that you know if you start thinking about like post apocalyptic uh, colors are going to be always like yellows and browns and then magical colors are going to be like blues and greens and maybe some like pink or something like that and if you uh, think about the future, there's going to be like neutral colors, like grays and blacks. So I had to go. It's going to be a challenge, but that is going to be a challenge for tomorrow. I hope you like this, show you my process of how I did this. Uh, tomorrow I'm going to try to finish this off. And then the next day I'm going to try to make these characters like pose with all the clothes to see how it works and if you need anything uh, correcting. That's going to be it for today. My name is Javier and I can draw. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.